Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. So I finally released my second YouTube channel and if you'd be so kind as to go over and check it out and subscribe. It is the Royal Daily Tea History and Fashion channel. Now there we're going to talk about royal history, we're going to talk about fashion, we're also going to have a lot of fun topics talking about books and movies and some other videos as well. I have a lot of really fun things planned for that channel. Now I know a lot of people, they wanted to join my Patreon, but they were not able to financially do so. So I might have some more personalized vlogs over on that channel. That way if you're not able to join the Patreon, you can join the other YouTube channel for free. So let me know if you would like to see a little bit more personalized videos over on that channel. But I'm excited. I have a lot of fun things planned, especially in the month of December. Now I do have my first three videos on there. They are the Royal Bride series. And I do have another episode that will be dropping very soon. So if you would go over and help me get to 1,000 subscribers, I would greatly appreciate it. But you guys, we have a lot of juicy royalty to get through. So sit back and relax. Grab yourself a beverage. And let's get into the royal daily tea. So we all know that the spare himself, Prince Harry, has announced his book is going to be published on January 10th. He released the cover art and the title of his upcoming memoir. But the funny thing is, he, you know, him and his wife, Megan, always have a separate set of rules for everyone else and themselves. Apparently, when he was in the throes of writing his memoir, he had approached quite a few of his friends and ex-girlfriends and asked them for their cooperation in his autobiography, in which a lot of them were actually kind of stunned and politely declined. You know, this is the same man who would hit the roof if any one of them ever once peeped anything to the press in regards to him. But now that he's writing an autobiography, well, he just wants to get their permission to make sure he can spill their stories in the book. Now, as we said previously, you know, Harry went through some very wild party years. Many of Harry's friends were a little bit taken aback and a little concerned about how much was Prince Harry going to tell about them and their stories. You know, many of these men are very professional. They're married. They've moved on. They have families. They don't exactly want their drunken college days and their wild party days in their 20s splashed over in Harry's memoir where he's making millions upon millions of dollars, yet they get nothing. Not to mention all of them have been extremely quiet and loyal to the prince, who's now just blabbing to the highest bidder. So if I was one of Harry's friends or ex-girlfriend, I would be a little taken aback and a little pissed. You know, here is a man who's such a hypocrite that would unfriend people if they ever said anything to the press about him but yet he's writing a memoir for $20 million and he can, you know, spill their secrets. You know, these people are professionals. They've moved on. And I'm sure they do not want their dirty laundry aired out in public. So what gives Harry the right to do so? So according to an online source, a lot of his old flames and friends have politely declined to be a part of his controversial upcoming autobiography. I just think it's a little bit ironic how rules for me do not include rules for thee or however they say it. Definitely a hypocrite for sure. Now people are coming out saying, you know, Harry wrote the book for himself. It's for his healing. It's for his story. Well, that's fine. He called write it in a damn diary. Dear diary, I feel like number two again today because my mummy called me the spare. I mean, heaven forbid. Do we really need to hear about this in an actual book? I think what people are forgetting is that Prince William lost his mother on the same day that Prince Harry lost his mother. Now granted he was a whole two years older, but it didn't make it any simpler or any easier. He still suffered the same loss. The same loss that Prince Harry did. You know, my mother was an orphan at 10 days old. At 10 days, my mother's mother passed away after giving birth. And her, she never met her father. He died in the war. 
So my mom was an orphan, had no parents at 10 days old, and was adopted out to family. She didn't have the greatest upbringing, we'll just say that. So for Harry to cry about his poor life, wanting to relive a moment that was 25 years ago that we've all saw on TV, granted, I understand it was devastating, but there are other people in the world who have also suffered major losses. My mom never had a mother. She never had a father. And that is something that has haunted her her entire life, but she wasn't a victim. She overcame and created the life that she wanted on her own terms. But she is the first person who hates when people play the victim card. You're only a victim if you allow yourself to be a victim. And Harry, son, you ain't no victim. You're a privileged prince who lost his mother, unfortunately, at the age of 12. But the fact that he wants to tell his story according to his truth means he's going to slam other people and hurt other people. You know, everyone in that royal family suffered after Diana passed. It wasn't just Harry. Prince Charles, he had pain. The Queen, Philip, William, Princess Diana's family, her friends, everyone, even the nation, all mourned for Princess Diana. And now Harry is just bringing it out, I guess telling it from his perspective as a 12-year-old boy, and he has a right to do so. But it's rumored that when he submitted his very first draft, that it was boring, it was kind of a self-help, California-style, feel-good book, and the publishers were like, look, we're not paying you $20 million to sit in a circle and sing Kumbaya and tell people to search their feelings. You know, he's probably throwing in a whole bunch of better-up stuff, right? They're like, we want the goods, Harry. We want a pound of flesh. So now he had to, quote, sex it up, and he had to put a lot of juice in there. So in my opinion, I think Harry is definitely going to regret this decision. It's going to be very raw and very unfiltered, and there's nothing wrong with having your feelings, but when your feelings are at the expense of other people, once it's out there, it's out there. You can't retract it back. You cannot retract it back, just like the statements he made on Oprah Winfrey, he can never take it back. Once you say that, once you accuse that publicly, people will not forget it. I, I had a family gathering about two weeks ago when my sister was in town, and a family member who I haven't seen for a while was like, oh, so what do you think about the queen dying? And funny, she's like, you know, and that one girl, that one American, you know, biracial princess, I don't know her name, you know, and they're just so mean to her. And you know me, I'm like, oh, Lord, let me hold back. Ooh, keep your mouth shut, keep your mouth shut. But I had to set her straight, and I said, first of all, they were not mean to her. They were not racist to her. They were very nice to her, and she's the one who spit in their face. So, again, people are definitely following that narrative that Harry and Meghan put out on the Oprah Winfrey show. And I'm sure this book is going to put out some more stuff. I mean, people already believe that the royal family was responsible for Princess Diana's undoing. Okay, they already accused them. Quite a few conspiracy theories. I'm not going to say it, but we all know. Conspiracy theories that the royal family may or may not have been responsible, which is not true. But again, even Harry himself was playing into the controversy of, oh, they judged my mother because she was dating a man who was non-white. And now they're going to do it to my wife, the evil royals, putting out this narrative that his family has something to do with his mother's death, which is horrific. And then he accuses them of being racist, and now he has another book coming out. It's like, oh, my God. So it's just horrible, horrible timing, you know, that here is King Charles you know, now starting his reign, having to deal with uh, the fact that he lost his mom, um, the fact that the queen was the number one most popular royal. It's a huge hit to the country. And now he has his rogue son out in Montecito living the life of a Hollywood prince with no responsibilities and just tons of money. Now crying in his golden teacup about my daddy didn't ride a bike with me. My mommy called me spare. It's like, oh my God, seriously? Seriously? Nobody wants to hear about your 12-year-old self. It's been 25 years, son. Get over it. You know, Prince William isn't sitting there asking people to feel sorry for him. Prince William isn't claiming himself to be a victim. He, unfortunately, doesn't have that privilege. He has responsibilities. He's a father. He's a husband. He's the future king. He's got shit to do. 
Harry apparently has got a lot of time on his hands to sell his soul to the highest bidder of $20 million. Now we know it's a four book deal. So heaven forbid what else he's going to come out with because he is a one trick pony. They only have so much stuff to go around. So I hope y'all are spreading that thing out because Lord knows what are you going to put in the other three books? So apparently it is rumored that Megan is going to write a book. I'm sure she's going to take one of those books for herself and make it all about, you know, Megan. So that would make more sense that the four book deal that Megan would be a part of that deal because we all know Megan has a lot to say and she doesn't have an NDA y'all. She's got all those hidden diaries. She's just going to throw them at the publisher and say, have at it. Here you go. <laughs> Anyways. So the interesting thing is that uh, Megan Markle's IMDb page has been updated and it says that she's going to be appearing at the coronation of King Charles III. That's interesting that Megan has already updated her page and that she's going to be there. So I guess Harry and Megan are very, very confident that even though their docu-series from hell is coming out sometime this year and that his book is coming out in January, that those two people are going to be sitting down and attending the King's coronation. Now, I have a feeling that is correct that they are going to be attending the coronation because as we know with the royal family, it's like they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't. They can't come out and really do anything publicly because if they do, they're going to fall into the narrative of, oh, y'all are mean bullies. Look what you're doing to me and Harry. You're cutting us off. You know, the whole thing we talked about, about the 1937 amendment being changed where Prince Harry and Prince Andrew would be removed, it turns out they're not technically going to be removing them. Instead, they're going to be adding in two more people. So in my opinion, that is the way that the royal family has to work. If you look at them, they do a lot of things between the lines. You know, they say 80% of communication is nonverbal and the royal family works in a nonverbal environment where you just see what they do, but they'll never come out and fully tell you unless it's absolutely necessary. So when you looked at the family's website and they had all of the working royals and the royals ranked, when they put Andrew and Meghan and Harry at the bottom of the page, that was basically telling you they're not working royals. They're still part of the family, but you can see in the importance of relevance where we're putting them. So even though they weren't technically removed from the page, because again, that's a whole other enchilada. Instead, they just moved them to the bottom of the page. But we all know what it means. It means they're not working royals. They're not relevant. We're not going to remove them because, you know, sensitivity issues, but we're definitely letting everyone know where we're ranking them. Okay. Just like at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, Meghan and Harry attended, but they were not part of the royal, you know, celebration in regards to they're not participating in any royal capacity. They're literally attending as guests and they were seated accordingly to how they were in the relevance of the royal family and you can tell they were pouting just like at the queen's funeral they were still there as members of the royal family and yes harry did participate um, in some activities for her majesty's funeral but again when it comes to king charles's coronation they will be there in attendance but they certainly will have no official capacity or duties in regards to the coronation that's going to be prince william Prince William will probably do some stuff during the coronation, and we know that Camilla is going to be crowned, but Prince Harry and Meghan, they're going to be up in the bleachers and the nosebleeds section, sitting next to Andrew, doing nothing. You know what I mean? They're going to be in attendance, but they're not going to be in a very good position in attendance, because if they don't invite Harry and Meghan to the coronation, it's going to look bad. And again, it's going to play into the victim narrative that the royal family is evil and racist and they didn't even invite Harry and Meghan to the coronation. And the thing is, is Harry and Meghan know this. They know that the royal family can never come out and say, no, we're not inviting their asses. Nope, they're not invited. They have to play nice. They have to send out the invitation and pray to God they don't show up. 
And if they show up, they're sitting in the nosebleeds, right? They have to send out the invitation and hope it gets lost in the mail. Just like for the stupid story about, oh, Harry and Meghan are, are expected to snub Christmas with his father, King Charles. Again, that invitation was lost in the mail, but they could put out the PR story just like they snubbed the Queen last year. Remember that? But again, we don't even know if they were invited. So I think it's a lot of the Harry and Meghan flap in their mouth for PR and the royal family is never going to correct it. But again, they can never come out and say, no, you're not invited to Christmas because that would look really bad on the royal family. Again, the royal family, in my opinion, they play the long game. This is a game of chess with Harry and Meghan. You got to read between the lines of the 80% non-communication that's not verbal. That's where the royal family is in between the lines. They do things without saying it, but you see it. Just like they didn't give Archie and Lilibet the prince and princess title, it's still the same on the website, but they're not acknowledging. They're saying, oh, he'll get to it later. But I think it's pretty clear he didn't make it, you know, if he made the prince and princess of Wales automatically, why couldn't he just made Archie and Lilibet prince and princess? So in my opinion, he's not going to. But instead of coming out and saying no, they're placating Harry and Meghan just by, oh, he's too busy. We don't have time, right? We'll wait till after the new year, meaning after the book. You see what I'm saying? So they're kind of playing chess here. They're playing the long game. So when the queen came out and said, recollections may vary when Harry and Meghan were on the Oprah Winfrey show, what she was really saying was, bitch be lying. And we have the royal receipts to prove it, but we're not going to do that right now. But best believe we're going to annihilate them with our evidence. So the royal family plays chess, and they've been doing this for thousands of years, sweetheart. Meghan and Harry play in the now. They play six months from now, you know, three months from now. The royal family plays a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. They are in it for the long haul, the long game. They are the masters of chess. Meghan and Harry, quite frankly, they're not that bright. They can't tell their left from their right or what story they made up when half the time. That is why they're contradicting themselves. And that is why they are so easy to find out about all their lies and tall tales. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing. It's at the point where we need to bring out the Harry and Meghan bingo card for 2023 and decide, okay, what's going to come out next? It's embarrassing. Honestly, but again, Harry and Meghan don't seem to embarrass. But the hilarious thing is that Harry and Meghan overplayed their hand. They really, really did not anticipate that the public was going to embrace Charles and Camilla and the royal family as much as they did after Her Majesty passed. King Charles' popularity has shot up among the British public since he has become king. Many Brits have been impressed with the new king since he ascended to the throne in September following the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. So if asked what their view was on King Charles has changed, 24% of the public said they had a higher opinion of him than before. So the poll found he had a 58% approval rating that he is going to be a good king. And that is a huge jump than what he had previously. In my opinion, Harry has some royal regrets. I do believe he is regretting it, but it's kind of too late. He's taken the money. They have to produce what they promised. You know, that whole year of money grabbing, ask, you know, asking for forgiveness instead of permission, and then next year maybe doing a whole year reconciliation. But it's gonna be kind of hard when you're starting off the year with your slam fest novel and we have three more novels in his deal with Penguin Random House. And we all know Megzi in her quote, I have a lot to say in her secret diaries. Lord knows what that woman is going to put in her book. I think it's going to be 10 times more devastating than what Prince Harry is going to say.
So what do you guys think? Do you think that the royal family is playing a game of chess with Harry and Meghan and speaking volumes and how they're planning to handle them in the future? And do you think Harry and Meghan overplayed their hands and are in for a rude awakening in 2023? Leave me your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and please be sure to go out and check out and subscribe to my brand new YouTube channel, Royal Daily Tea History and Fashion. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.